at its core, remember, at its core, it is still an infield number four. Everything about it is still the same except a few pieces and parts to it. So most noticeably, you're going to see the stock has obviously been cut down and parts removed. All right, and that's part of the sporterization process. Basically, they reduce a lot of weight by taking a lot of the, uh, the wood off. The old military firearms, they would have extended forearms. A lot of it was to protect the barrel and pretty much just to give it that extra little bit of heft. Now back in the day, remember, hand-to-hand -hand combat was fairly common, so a nice heavy rifle was very handy, okay? And even sporterized, this thing is still pretty hefty. So eh, imagine being a bad guy on the, uh, the access side and getting a butt stroke from this. Nope, no thank you. Now, it does still have some of the old components on there, the bayonet lug that you can see on there. The loading tower is still there, so I can still load stripper clips on there. The original sights have been removed. Okay, so they originally had uh, peep sights, and they had a ladder sight on there that you could pop up and do extended ranges. Now, it's been replaced with the Williams sight that you can see on there, and that is adjustable, but from whoever sporterized this thing, I would assume that they converted it for the sake of being a deer rifle, so, uh, you know, here we are. It does still have the original markings on it for what's left anyway. There's a few up on the end of the barrel that are really interesting. On the side, you'll see a couple of the markings too, and I'll get some close-ups for you. And I'm not really sure what some of these markings are, so I'm going to leave it up to you guys just for fun. Power it out. Let us know. That way everybody can, you know, kind of learn from this. Uh, I mean, I could Google it myself and but I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to let you guys do the work for me. <laughs> uh, on the wristband, it shows you the date of manufacture, 1942, which is really cool to me. So this was there at the very beginning. This was manufactured. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the British Enfield number 4 Mark One is a bolt action, and it takes two five-round stripper clips in this uh, detachable magazine here, and so you can have a total capacity of 10 rounds. Back in World War II days, and even back in World War I, that was a big deal. Like a really, really big deal. Now it is cock on close, and that attributes to the speed of the rifle. Believe me, it goes really, really fast. I'm not going to burn off any kind of ammo like this. I do have a previous video where I show a little bit of the speed of it. But when it cocks on close, you can see the hammer came back right there. And it's not loaded, of course. So an easy way to decock it is just like that and that'll work just fine for the love of god don't use that method to decock it if it's still loaded okay don't do it that's only if it's unloaded i have to put that disclaimer out there because i know somebody's going to do it so anyway even though some of the parts are missing it's still a very shootable gun very very shootable gun and i'm going to show you that in a second so anyway like i was saying this thing at its core is still and then field number four. Okay, this is still the basic rifle. It's just the appearance has been changed up a little bit. Some parts have been removed, but it still functions essentially the same way. Namely, like I mentioned, with the stripper clips. So you'll take two of these, open the action up, put it right here on the bridge, and it'll set right in there. And then with your thumb, you're gonna run those rounds down into it, and you'll see it when I load up in a minute and you'll run the rounds straight in the magazine pull the stripper clip out discard it get a second one same deal so for my purposes today i'm just going to be loading stripper clips of five because we're going to be doing 50 yards and 115 yards uh ringing the the gong out there and i think that should be sufficient and then if i can find something fun to shoot we'll do that too i can't shoot any steel at 50 yard range it'll destroy it uh, if you had a look at the steel swingers and any of the other videos, there's holes in them. <laughs> yeah, because people have shot them at short range with uh, a little bit more oomph behind the round. So I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to find something else that's fun to shoot too. So we'll, we'll have a good time with this. But anyway, so these are not mil spec. Mil spec for the Enfield back in the day was 174 grains and 303 brett. These are 180 grains okay so they're gonna fly a little bit higher they're gonna have a little bit more boot to them but given 
the market is what it is so this is what I could find this is what we're shooting now I've shot these on several occasions and they're plenty accurate enough so it's not like we're gonna be shooting a shotgun here we're still gonna be getting some good groups and for the sake of argument these these are not the original mil spec so even if I did still have the original sights these would still fly high or they might even fly differently than the other ones did but as far as what I've got right here they do just fine all right and so without further ado let's see how she does at the 50. A straggler there better put my ears in for this one That thing's got some bite. <laughs> oh man, let's see how we did at that 50. <laughs> 